Hello there! In this video I'll show you how to build an Amazon gift card giveaway using Docker, API Platform and Reloaded. This presentation was loosely inspired by a real case I happen to be involved with. I hope you enjoy it! So it goes like this. Um, the people in the marketing department were really excited about an upcoming campaign announcing the new product release. The problem was our user base was kind of small. So we got together to brainstorm, thinking what can we do about it. And finally we came up with this idea of putting together a giveaway and have people leave their email address in exchange for a chance to win. And suddenly we had a project. And this application features quite a few nice shiny objects as we all like. And main technologies are an API platform which is uh, Symfony plus Next.js uh, Reloadly is going to be the provider for the gift cards and uh, Docker will be handling all of the infrastructure for us. So let's have a quick look at the app and then go behind the scenes, shall we? So users will be greeted with a simple sign up form where they can leave their contact information to be eligible for the gift card. Then the administrator will be able to see everyone who signed up. And afterwards there will be a command line interface script in charge of picking today's winner. And another one in charge of purchasing and sending the gift cards to the winners. The whole application is built using API platform which is basically a pre-built Symfony project aimed specifically at APIs. And there are two entities in this project which are the participant and the giveaway. And each giveaway has one and only one winner, but any participant can win many giveaways. So now that we have our context, let's uh, go into the code. All right, so here's our code. This is uh, the, the project. It complies an API uh, component, um, PWA, and some other stuff that, uh, well, we can check out later. But let's dig right into the API, which is the main thing to be noticed here. So this is a very typical Symfony application, as you can see. Um, so let's go into the source. And let's start by uh, taking a look at the entities I mentioned earlier. So let's start with the participant. And here it goes. So uh, as you can see here, it's a simple ORM entity, a doctrine entity, if you will. Um, and we are using PHP 8 uh, attributes to define the mapping between the class and its uh, repository. Um, and there is another attribute which comes bundled with the API platform, which is API resource. Um, so let's take a quick look. Mm, as you can see, um, so it's a very simple um, PHP object, not very different from any other uh, um, entity object you might have seen using uh, Doctrine. Uh, but the, the beauty of using this attribute, the API resource, is that um, it will ask it will have an API platform automatically build all the admin scaffolding and stuff. So it's really pretty neat. So let's take a look at um, this one is okay. So let, let's see what the giveaway is all about. And um, all right, so it's again, it's a simple entity. And we have uh, here is the winner, which is actually creating the relation between the giveaway and the participant. And so just to get a sense of what's going on with the API platform, here's a um, couple of uh, modifiers or options that we are passing to the API resource attribute, in which, in which we are saying that this particular collection, the giveaway collection, will only be able to be queried it means it's it's only going to be able to respond to requests to get requests and the item operations will be either get or post meaning that uh, they will be able to be queried or also they will be able to be um, created um, which is something we are not particularly going to be using 
um, in the admin because as I mentioned earlier we are going to be using a couple of symphony commands to create new giveaways um, but all right so this is a very as I mentioned a very simple model but it you know it does the trick so let's see what else we have here um, in the controller we don't have anything because of uh, well that's another thing that the API platform builds um, uh, the controllers itself um, so we don't really have to worry about that unless we need to do uh, something very very specific um, but in a general case we don't really need that um, repositories well are very simple repositories they don't really have any no, anything in particular so let's go to the commands which uh, are uh, something that actually um, brings something to be seen so let's start with the pick winner common and here we go um, what we see here is a simple symphony common uh, its goal is to take from a randomized list of participants the one that will be declared the winner for today so let's see the execute method and all right so th this is a very simple validation to avoid picking more than one winner for a particular giveaway um, so here's the method the call to the main method the pick winner which we will see very soon and then we have the giveaway we uh, connect the winner with the giveaway and simply save it to the database and uh, picking the winner means to select first the IDs of all the participants and then select a randomized one from them and well that will be our winner um, okay so it's uh, really really simple but let's take a look at a more interesting one which would be the send gift cards command right so here again we have our symphony command and let's go straight into the midi parts of it right so here the first thing we notice is we have this uh, client class and which is what is this it's an app slash reloadly slash client okay so that's definitely something we want to take a closer look at but uh, let's keep that for a sec um so we can see how this um uh, entity manager and the client uh, are injected into the constructor for the common um, so let's keep going and see how how this goes so we have the available giveaways which means well we're going to see that in a, in a sec but um, what it means is giveaways which have not been uh, notified which win the winners have not been notified yet so that's what we want to do right now so we will take the winner's email right from the giveaway for each giveaway that uh, matches this uh, condition and we will send the gift card to this person so let's see what it means to send the gift card um right so here we get av available giveaways is a very simple query to the database and mark as sent is well again another very simple update uh, but uh, what we are actually looking for is oh this is a method from the client class so let's dig right in okay so send gift card to this uh, email means first to check whether we already have an access token and this is important because this is the part where we are actually making the communication with the reloadly server um, and, and that's why we need an access token because uh, the communication is based on OAuth so this is something we will need so we will first if we don't have an access token we will try to get one and we can see that in a, in a little, little bit um, but let's go into the purchase gift card for this email and uh, the thing is by using reloadly the purchasing and the sending of the gift card are one and only one and one and the same operation so here what we are going to do is um take a, is create the data the payload for the for the call we are about to to perform 
And so we are deciding which product ID we want to purchase. This product ID is connected to uh, one of the many available gift card options within Reloadly. And the quantity, how many do we want to purchase? Just one. The unit price is, uh, well, in our case, um, because of the nature of the application, it will be five because we want to send a $5 gift card. The sender name, it's, well, it's something that is um, part of the configuration of the application, which is something we will see in a, in a little while. And of course, the recipient email, this is probably the most important part, which is who are we sending this gift card to? So now with all this information in place, we can go ahead and do the actual request to the reload the server. And this is what we are going to do right here. So we take the HTTP client, which is a simple class implementing the HTTP client interface. And we are performing a POST request to the reload list base URL plus the specific endpoint for sending gift cards. And besides the information that we already constructed, we need to send this um, set of headers which uh, contain the access token first and the content type that we are going to be sending and accepting back. And uh, that's pretty much it. As you can see, it's really, really easy to perform this kind of request. And another beauty of using Reloadly is that uh, should we decide to change the specific gift card vendor, for instance, it will only entail changing a very little bit of configuration. The application would not have to be changed at all. So speaking of configuration, let's take a look at what's behind this. So here you can see that this configuration is a, another object. It's a class, app reloadly configuration class that I put together in order to build things in a solid kind of way. Um, so let's have a look at what it contains. So it is basically a repository for configuration values, nothing too fancy, just the client ID and secret, which help serve the purpose of identifying ourselves within Reloadly server. There is this flag for the sandbox, which means that are we using the actual production environment or are we just testing in a sandbox environment? And the product ID is the ID for the gift card product that we want to be using. And sender name is, well, how do we identify who is uh, purchasing the, the gift card? And the unit price is the actual well, the value of the gift card that we are sending. Um, so that's pretty much it for the code. But uh, you might be wondering where do these values come from? And that's where we are going to rely on Symfony's configuration system. So let's all take a quick look at config services.yml. And here we can find that we are explicitly setting the configuration for the app slash reload slash configuration class. These are the arguments to the constructor method. And we have this client ID or well, every, every one of them is resolved using an environment value. And these environment values come from the .m files. So let's have a look at one. Here it is. So these are the values specific to reload the API. And these are simple placeholders. What you should do is replace this placeholder with the values you find in your particular um, Reloadly dashboard. Um, the best way to do that is to create a .env.local file and just put the appropriate values in there. Um, that's pretty much it for the API. And on the application side, we have this other uh, project, which is the PWA that uh, that's the front end, but it's not really very interesting because it was completely built using uh, API platform tools. So you can take a look at it if you want. In terms of the infrastructure, we're dealing with a PostgreSQL server, a Kali web server, and a PHP interpreter. Putting all of this together separately can be challenging, particularly keeping it all in sync with what's in production and development. But uh, by leveraging Docker, it becomes really much, much easier. And actually, we are not using Docker itself. I mean, we are, but we are doing it through Docker Compose. 
which is much easier to use specifically when dealing with several containers at the same time. So let's take a quick look at the docker compose.yml file, which uh, defines the services that we will be using. So you see that we have this PHP. Uh, with, this will be mapped to a Docker image and container. Um, well, there we have all of the information that comes from the environment. There's this other service, the PWA, that will be acting as the front end for our application. This is Kali, the web server that we're using. Um, and this is the database. So uh, as you can see, this is a very simple and easy to read and to write file that uh, will leverage all the power of Docker. And with all that in place, just these two commands will get you where you need to be. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mauro Chokrin. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment right here or reach out to me via email. You can get the code for this application from GitHub and you can also download this presentation. See you soon.